Hello, we're here today with Tom Campbell. Hi, Tom. Hi, Donna. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got started in physics and in consciousness research and how you came about your My Big Toe? Well, it all started in about 1972 when I got out of graduate school and took my first job as a professional physicist. And I, so I really had, uh, at this time, two careers going. I had this one in physics and almost the same time I got introduced to Bob Monroe and then I did consciousness research. And I was able to take both of these fields, sort of my day job and my night job, and merge them together into a larger understanding of how reality worked. Um, it was necessary to be the physicist to understand the uh, mechanics of how reality worked, and necessary to be the conscious researcher to actually experience it and gather the data. What does my big toe achieve? What unfolds in My Big Toe, and how did you come up with the title? Well, My Big Toe is actually my big theory of everything, and the my in My Big Toe isn't because I'm so proud of it. The my is there to emphasize that if it's not your experience, it's not your truth. So My Big Toe is just meant to be a catalyst for the reader to come up with their own big toe. It's, it's not something to believe, it's a tool to use to create your own understanding of the nature of reality. Now your trilogy develops a complete derivation of consciousness. How do you begin with something like that? Well, it took me about 35 years to uh, understand the nature of consciousness and how it worked. It's not an easy or a, or a quick thing to understand. It took a lot of, of research on my part, of going into altered states of consciousness, and then once there, playing the physics role of how do you know that what you are seeing is real? How do you know you're not making it up? How um, can you uh, use this consciousness? What can it do? What can it do? What are the limitations? All of these things had to be discovered very slowly with painstaking research in that you, you have to be able to repeat an altered state every time you have to get to the same place and it has to be repeatable and then you try to eliminate as many variables as possible and vary the ones that you'd like to see what impact they have. So eventually after 35 years of doing this kind of research I thought I understood how reality worked and began writing the My Big Toe. Now the My Big Toe has just two assumptions in it. Uh, one assumption is that consciousness is, consciousness exists, and the other one is that evolution exists. Okay? And with just those two assumptions, one can derive all the rest logically, you know, deductively, if you will. And uh, when I was done, I realized I had a model of consciousness that explained most of the things that metaphysicians talk about, most of the things that theologians talk about, most of the things that the uh, paranormal community talk about, and then I discovered that the same concepts that allowed one to understand the nature of reality also allowed one to understand the nature of physics. And I realized that I had the, the solution in this, this uh, my big toe to answer some questions that hadn't been answered for almost a century. And that is, why were particles best represented by probability distributions? That's the key unknown in quantum mechanics. And how is it that uh, the speed of light is always a constant? That's the key unknown in, in uh, relativity. So um, that was uh, kind of an extra. I started out with a, with a description of consciousness and realized that if you understood consciousness, you could derive physics. That this physical reality really was a subset. Consciousness is fundamental and everything else you know, flows from that. 
So that's how those two got to be combined. And since that time, I've found more and more connections between science and consciousness. And uh, this is primarily uh, what I bring to the table, is that people have found explanations of consciousness, why we're here, what is the point of being. Uh, you know, we have all the world's great religions have come to some uh, understanding of these issues. Philosophers over the ages have come to some understanding of these issues. And what I bring to the table is that now I can cast the same issues. Why are we here? What is our purpose? Uh, what's the nature of reality? What can and cannot consciousness do? Where does consciousness come from? How did it, you know, how did it start? What are its origins? What are its limitations? And I can uh, answer all those questions with logic, with science. And the same logic that answers those kinds of metaphysical and philosophical questions also derives the physics. It answers most of the paradoxes that we have in science today are um, understood clearly and logically under the, the uh, concepts in my big toe. With this understanding, what is the task set before humanity under your model of, of uh, reality? Well, the, the purpose of us and why we're here is that we are not physical bodies. This is a virtual reality. This is a virtual body. Our, our body is much like the elf in the World of Warcraft uh, video game uh, virtual reality. We are fundamentally consciousness. You see, in the, in the World of Warcraft video, the player is the consciousness for the elf. The elf is just a, a computed virtual being. Well, our bodies are like that. They're computed virtual uh, avatars, if you will, and we are the player. We're the consciousness. We make all the choices. And so we're here to make choices. And the reason we're here to make choices is because consciousness can best be modeled as an information system. Information systems evolve by creating information. That is content. They create content. They create structure. Now, the opposite of structure is randomness. The opposite of content is randomness. There is no information in randomness. So our point here in making these choices is to exercise our choice making in such a way that we create more content. That is that we evolve as a unit of consciousness. And we're doing this within a context of interacting with lots of players. It's a multiplayer game. And when you have lots of players interacting, you form a social system. And within a social system, the optimal way of interacting with others is to care about those others, is to be helpful, to be cooperative, you see, to have compassion. These are the things that optimize a social arrangement. So I call that the, the love path. Now the opposite of the love path is the fear path. And fear is the is the, is the path that where you de-evolve. It's the path of high entropy, not the path of low entropy. See, high entropy means more randomness. Low entropy means more structure, more content. So as it turns out, what we're here to do is to make choices so that we learn and evolve to becoming love. And strangely enough, a system of logic that supports us becoming love, that actually makes that necessary in our purpose, is the same logic and the same science that answers these questions that have been unanswered for a century in physics. So what's happened is we've married these two. We've taken a theory of consciousness and we've bridged metaphysics, theology, and physics. Now we can see that all of those things are all part of one bigger understanding of the way the world works. We can put all of those in a, within the same context 
of being, of uh, choice making. So that's the that's the difference. Now that had been done for many many centuries. You know the you know the Buddha accomplished that, and so did you know Muhammad, and so did you know Jesus, and so did a, other lots of other people figured this out. But they only got the metaphysical and the philosophical and the theological parts right. And uh, they didn't understand how all of that was connected to science. So we've had science on one hand, and we've had you know, an understanding that reality is bigger than just us on the other hand. And these two have been separated with a big wall between them. They did not mix well. So... Now, they not only mix well, but we see that they're all part of the same thing. They're all connected. And good metaphysics produces good physics and good theology, you see. So that's kind of the new, a new point, that it is, instead of being poetry, instead of it being a description, it's science. Well, that's perfect, Tom. And ending with science, as you are first and foremost a scientist, this is a perfect short introduction to those who would like to know more about you and your work. And this will be a perfect introduction to share with people who want to introduce your work to others. Thank you so much. Thank you, Donna.